In this video, we're going to cover four reasons why your displacement map might not be working correctly. A displacement map is different from a bump map or a normal map as it physically pushes and alters your geometry rather than fake it. Here you can see I have a displacement scale value of 1 and it's warping my cube. That's because there isn't enough topology to actually manipulate the geometry into a checkered pattern. So a good start is to make sure you have enough topology on your geometry that your displacement map can actually deform. Our next issue is that for this example, by default our scale is set to 1, which is way too high. If you find that your displacement map is blown up, it will be because your scale is too high. Try bringing the value down to something much lower, like 0.025, and incrementally work your way up until it feels right. In order to get the best out of our displacement map, we're going to need subdivisions. Most people don't realize that hidden away in the attribute of your object, under the Arnold tab, is a subdivision tab. You want your type set to Cat Clark and your iterations around three. This will help you get those fine lines and smooth edges on your displacement map. This is about to get a little bit complicated. A displacement map is actually made of values from 0 to 1. Those values inform how much the geometry gets pushed in, pushed out, or doesn't change at all. We try to represent this with colours. White represents the highest value of 1 that gets pushed out, and black represents the lowest value, 0, which gets pushed in. This makes grey the representative of 0.5, our midpoint, at which nothing will get displaced. However, on a 32-bit map, such as a ZBrush map, you may get values that run from 1 to negative 1, and this shifts all the values out of place as grey is no longer the midpoint. Black now represents the values between 0 to negative 1. This is because there is no colour darker than black, which can be a little misleading. In this case, we now need to inform Arnold to shift our scalar value to 0, which is the new midpoint. Our scalar value would now be 0. Here is an example where I've used a ramp shader on a single plane to show the push and pull between 0 and 1. As the scalar value is set to 0, this is our midpoint at which every value above it is pushing up. By changing the scalar value to 0.5, we have now made grey the new midpoint. And that's it. Good luck and thanks for listening.